Hey, it's Mark here from Ripple Training. So we just released a brand new plugin for Final Cut Pro called Time Warps. And because we're a training company who makes plugins, we like to teach you not only how to get the most out of the plugins that we make, but how you can make them yourself. So just like we've done with our other plugins like messages, paths, punch-ins, shortcuts, and transmissions, today on MacBreak Studio, I'm not only gonna show you Time Warps, I'm gonna show you how you can make a version yourself. The fastest way for me to explain what RT Time Warps does is to show you the 60 second teaser video. So let's start with that. So as you saw in that teaser video, we implemented RT Time Warps as title effects. So here they are in the Titles browser under RT Time Warps, and there's five of them. And I really want to start with Super Strobe because that was really the impetus for this plugin in the first place. I was seeing a lot of requests from people for a way to create reduced frame rate in Final Cut. How can you take a clip in Final Cut and play it at a lower frame rate? Because by default, you really can't. So that's where Super Strobe comes in. So for example, I have this rafting clip here, and here it is at normal frame rate. And I'll press X to mark it as a range, select Super Strobe, and press Q for a Connect Edit. And by default, if we look over in the Title Inspector, it plays at 2 frames per second instead of the default 30 frames per second. So if I play it now, it'll play at 2 frames per second. and you can go as low as one frame per second or as high as 60. Now, I call these all frame rate repeaters because the way this works is it freezes on a frame and it repeats that frame for instance for 30 frames if you're down to one frame per second. It repeats that frame and then jumps to whatever the next frame is and repeats that. So they're all frame rate repeaters. If you wanna make this yourself, it's actually very easy. Let's jump over to motion create a new Final Cut title project. And by the way, you might wonder why title projects? You could certainly do this as an effect, but we found that titles work better for effects because you can see them on top of clips in Final Cut and you can extend them over multiple clips at the same time. So we implement most of our plugins as title effects. So here we have a new title project. I'm gonna delete the text, we don't need that. Select the title background and under filters, under time, you'll see five different filters and the name should look familiar. Echo, Scrub, Strobe, Trails, and Wide Time. So I built Super Strobe based on the Strobe filter. If you select it, it gets applied to the clip. And then in the inspector, it only has two parameters and you can publish them by clicking here and choosing Publish. If I go to the project, select the project, there's our published parameters that will show up in Final Cut. All you need to do now is save it and it'll be available in Final Cut under the category and theme that you select. I'll cancel that. So what I've tried to do is take each of these time-based filters, these frame repeating filters, and add value to them, both by adding enhanced features and as well as adding information so that you can understand when best to use them. So for example, for this Super Strobe, I've added quick tips, and I've added these quick tips for all five of these templates. If you click the checkbox, you get a description of how that particular effect works and what the parameters do. In addition, you can see I've added a bunch of other options by 
extending the functionality of this template. And one thing I really love is this add dissolves. So if you click add dissolves, then you can use all these parameters to adjust those dissolves. But what that does is adds little dissolves between each of those freeze frames essentially and creates a totally different feel to the strobe effect, to the reduced frame rate. So I felt like that was a really good add. By the same token, if I use it on this example here of this bike going over a jump, X and Q, by default that looks like this, but I can turn on Add Dissolves and get something that looks very different. And in fact, I'm going to increase the strobe rate a little bit and then I'm also going to change this blend mode. I've added the ability with almost all of these to add a blend mode for how these repeated frames are blended back in and the ability to blend back in the original. In this case, if I choose a blend mode of darken, it will darken the original clip and we get a very different effect. So my goal with these has been to take what are fairly straightforward time-based filters in motion but really understand how they work differently and how to add functionality to them. If we look here, I have an original clip and then three of these time-based filters applied. The Wide Time one, Super Trails, and Echo Blend. And this is a simple shot that pans across this statue, but it lets you see how these each work quite differently from each other. And I really took quite a bit of time using these in different scenarios to figure out how they work differently, what footage they work best on, and explaining those differences. So this wide time one creates more of a motion blur effect with the frame spread out over time. The echo blend creates copies that are spread over the longest period of time and super trails creates copies with the greatest opacity. So if we go back to motion, instead of the strobe effect, I'll delete that. You could apply echo, trails, or wide time, publish the parameters and save them. Scrub is a little different, so I'm not going to address that here. But you could make your own version of each of these simply by adding that filter in motion and publishing it. What I've tried to do is add a little more to each of them, and I want to show you quickly what that looks like. So as opposed to Super Strobe that creates repeating frames over time, these other three, Echo Blend, Super Trails, and Wide Time Blend, create repeating frames within each frame. For instance, here I've applied Echo Blend, and by default, we can see four copies of the bike rider. In the title inspector, we once again have quick tips. The delay indicates how much time until the next echo is produced, and the number is the number of echoes. So right now, one means one second. So if we see this rider at the very beginning, and we move forward in time, the next copy doesn't come in until one second later. And what I love about Echo Blend is it creates these copies over a long period of time, over a full second, longer than any of the other ones. What I don't like about it necessarily, let's move forward in time and increase the number a little bit and decrease the delay so we get a few more copies, is the lower opacity of the original. So by using this additional feature of Blend Copies, in this case, I can use the Darken Blend mode to bring back the full opacity of the original source clip. Now, one thing I should explain is each of these filters is repeating the entire frame, not just, for instance, this rider. Nothing else seems to change. If I tap the V key to toggle off the visibility of that effect, nothing seems to change with the background at all. You can see it a little bit with the tree changing there because it's a lockdown shot. And these filters work great on lockdown shots because anything that isn't moving doesn't change at all. And the only thing that's changing is affected by the filter. By the same token, the blend modes can affect the entire background image. But if you choose either darken or lighten, that will only affect the moving areas of the image because darken and lighten pick the lighter or darker version of the pixels. And if nothing's moving, it just stays exactly the same. But if I were to choose a different blend mode like overlay, then it would affect everything in the frame and can create interesting looks. But Darken and Lighten are the ones that won't change your background at all. If I add Wide Time Blend to this shot, 
Wide Time Blend works differently than Echo Blend in that it has a shorter duration, even if you spread it all the way out to one, it's not a full second, but it gives you uh, many more copies closer together. So by using it, especially if you really crank the amount up, and in this case, change the blend mode to darken because our subject is so dark, it brings that subject back and can create a, a completely different kind of look. So I find these extra features that we've added really help you get the most out of each of these filters. Same with Super Trails. Super Trails, once again, includes quick tips, but basically they'll make trails either on the light or dark parts of the image. And the original Trails filter in motion lets you choose light or dark. But what we didn't hear is allow it to trail on both or either or. So there's one instance on the lighter pixels, there's one on the darker, and then you can blend back the original image. In this case, because we have a very dark shot, we could turn down the light one all the way and focus just on the dark one and bring its opacity all the way up. The cool thing about Super Trails is you get these full opacity copies that you can't get with Echo Blend or Wide Time Blend. So if you want those full opacity copies, this is a great way to get that. Once you've done that, you can change the number of echoes and how long they last. And you can keyframe all of these parameters to change over time. That brings us to the last one called Add Motion Blur. I wanted to add into this package the ability to add sort of basic motion blur because the other ones create very extreme motion blur. So in this example here of this bowling ball hitting these pins, I'm gonna to toggle off Add Motion Blur. And by default, there is some motion blur on these pins, but if I tap the V key to enable it, you can see how it's adding some motion blur uh, to the shot. You could add this on top of any of the other effects to add a little more motion blur. And in fact, you can stack any of these on top of each other to really create interesting effects. If you wanna create this add motion blur effect yourself, that's super easy. In Motion, you can start with a new title project, delete the text, select the project, go to the properties for the project, and down here are the motion blur settings. So you choose the settings that you want, the higher the shutter angle, the more motion blur, and the higher the samples, the more realistic the motion blur. But as you increase these, it can really dramatically increase render time. But you create the settings that you want here, and then from the render pop-up menu, you enable motion blur. When you save this, it will then apply that motion blur when you use it in Final Cut. Now there's no parameters to publish. You can't actually publish the samples or shutter angle. So if you want multiple versions, you can save multiple versions with different levels. What we've done in this plugin is try to find the best balance between render speed and motion blur, just to give you the option to add a little more motion blur to your shots. On the product webpage, which is linked to below in the description, there is a 15 minute video that provides a bunch of tips and tricks on how to get the most out of each of these effects, including keyframing them, stacking them, things like that. But before I leave this, I wanted to show you two things that are not in that video that I've discovered recently. I've been playing more with these. One is if you've ever shot with a 360 camera in what's called bullet time, which is what I've done here. So I'm swinging the camera around my finger, essentially keeping one object in the center of the frame. If I turn on wide time blend here, it creates a pretty cool effect. So just in the same way where if you have a lockdown camera with a single moving object can work well with these, by the same token, if you have a moving camera where the object is locked down in the center of frame, that can work well too. So that's one tip in terms of thinking about ways to use these. And here's another one that I've been playing with. If you shot an object and you didn't quite keep the camera steady, so if I play this, I shot this object and I purposely moved the camera around a little bit, not too much, but just enough so that when I stabilize it in Final Cut Pro, here in the video inspector under stabilization, I was able to enable tripod mode. Now tripod mode only becomes available if the shot is pretty stable to begin with. There's not too much motion, but if you are able to enable it, it basically turns that into a lockdown shot. So my object in the center is not moving at all, and it appears to make the background look like it's moving. So if I then speed this up by two times, and I put, for example, Super Trails on it, 
I get this very cool animated background with the blur in the background with the object sitting dead still. So just something to give you another idea of things that you might want to use to apply these effects to. So we'd love to know your thoughts. Please leave us a comment below. Time Warps are on sale for a limited time right now, so check out the link below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.